Good morning, everybody. This is your favorite aspiring historian here, a wandering author, reminding you that we're all the authors of our own lives. As always, my message remains the same. Spend less, live more, earn your freedom with reality. Yesterday, we talked about how Thrasybulus and Pisander both wanted to install an oligarchy here in uh, Athens, but I'm actually in Riverside today on Mount Rubido. So let's pick up from there and say, so Pisander's elite-oriented reforms further restricted democratic participation by creating a special census committee to handle formation of the Council of 400. This council is going to end up running the uh, entire city. Pay for, pay for public service was also suspended. That's oligarchic because poor people basically could not afford to be part of the government if they weren't getting paid to be part of it. Only wealthy people could. On Samos, Athenians were appalled to see what was transpiring and refused to recognize the new oligarchy's legitimacy, creating a democrat democracy in exile. So <clears throat> there were some Athenians who did not like seeing their democracy go away, and they fought back on the island of Samos. This rogue Samos state elected Thrasybulus as general, and Alcibiades was honored similarly, but he put the brakes on the plans to reinvade Athens proper. Remember, these are some of the wealthier folks and they may not have uh, wanted to to you know threaten the state plutarch actually commented on this occasion at least he proved to be a savior of the state nevertheless athenian grain supplies traveling through the hellespont's narrow straits were under threat from spartan allied forces the oligarch's plans quickly backfired and per pernicus a member of the old oligarchs was stabbed to death in the agora his assassin, an Aetolian, Aetolia is another city, would be rewarded citizenship and given a golden crown worth 1,000 drachma, which is a type of money, in return for the good he had done for the city and the Athenian people. Regardless, some segment of the population assailed the city, responding to the threat of lockdowns at the port of Piraeus. <clears throat> Tharmenes led armed mobs through the city and asked officials to follow through on promises to transmute the 400 to the 5,000, widening the uh, base of power there. <laughs> Tharmenes' initiative transferred power to the 5,000 and expanded its eligibility criteria to encompass anyone who could afford hoplite equipment. So that's definitely getting more democratic, but we're still limiting the, uh, the, the vote to the people who can afford hoplite equipment, which wasn't everybody back then. The 5,000's rule only lasted until the summer of 410, before it also succumbed to democratic pressures from below, and a full democracy is restored in the summer of 410. Um, yeah, and that's where we're going to leave it today. Uh, it's only a couple minutes long, but that's fine. Anyways, this is uh, Wandering Author here, reminding you to pay attention to history, because it's important. Uh, that's, where we, that's where we come from. As always, my message remains the same. Spend less, live more, and your freedom with frugality. What are you guys doing in order to inspire, uplift, and empower your local community today? Because this world isn't changing unless we all do our part. You can count on me to do mine daily. Till next time, love y'all.